this, and what do the big banks do? They ran our economy into the ground. And oh, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. You just said three. Oh, hold on. I know, I know you're, you're a lifelong leftist, that you're entitled to be. It's a free country. Are you aware of Bernie Sanders' positions? Yeah, I listen to the debate. I, I listen to all. I listen to everything he's. Do you know what he actually wants to do, other than what you heard during the the Stalin the the uh, the, the I should call it the Potemkin debate last night? I see what he's done. In the eighties, in the nineteen eighties, your your boy Sanders regularly called for public takeovers of various businesses, including utilities the oil industry, and big businesses. Your boy, Sanders, advocated seizing money from corporations and from one of America's richest families. Do you know that he met with the Sandinistas and said that the revolution would be peaceful in Nicaragua and that people loved them? Do you know that he glorified the Castros, who are butchers? Do you know any of this? No, I don't know, but I really don't care because the... Well, that's right, because your mind is made up. You're a typical ignoramus. I get it. With Pete Murder, you're, you're, bu you're buying. You're, you're like a fish, a catfish at the bottom of the of the mud, and the hook came down with a worm on it, and you bit. And you don't know that there's even a hook on the worm, do you? The conversation from the big banks, just like a communism. W what, what do you hate about? Wait a minute. What do you know about big banks? What do you have? An ATM card with three hundred dollars in it? What, what do you mean by big banks? You think we would have won World War Two if those big? Wait, wait. Banks stop with the stop with the with the screaming. What do you mean by big banks? Define what Bernie's going to do to give you an extra dollar in your pocket. The the other one, the one that went out a bit. Where you're not hearing me? You got another ten seconds. What do, define what a big bank is and what Bernie Sanders will do that will help you, the average guy. The big bank. He'll he'll go back to Glass Siegel, where he he won't let the investment in the. What, what did you just say? Which which bill? Uh, hold it. Which bill will he go back to? Uh, Glass Steagall. Remember Glass Steagall? Yeah, I'm glad you said it right. Yeah, it's from my my two books ago. I know all about Glass Steagall. I wrote about it in two books ago. And what's that going to do for you? Will it put an extra dollar in your pocket? I mean, you get the welfare check. You got Obamacare. You're not going to get any more money. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. This is a responsibility for the U.S. Justice Department to get involved. Whenever anybody in this country is killed while in police custody, this should automatically trigger a U.S. Attorney General's investigation. And I speak as a mayor who worked very closely and well with police officers, the vast majority of whom are honest, hardworking people trying to do a difficult you job. Communist but let piece us of be garbage. clear. If a police Clear. officer breaks the law, like any public official, that officer must be held accountable. And that's Dirty. not happening now, you garbage head, you? I, I'm going to scream in a minute. I can't take this. How a communist from New York, of the lowest ranks of New York communism, could get this far shows you how far down the Democrat Party has fallen. That they take a fine man, a patriot like Jim Webb, and drive him off the stage because he would have exposed Hillary for the harrowed and leftist that she is. Instead, the Democrat money bags, the billionaires who run the Democrat Party, the millionaires, billionaires, and trillionaires who run the Democrat Party, most of whom make a fortune on green energy scams, on public um, trough scams, those millionaires, billionaires, and trillionaires who support the Democrat Party drove a patriot like Jim Webb off the stage and left his low life stand there to make Hillary look centrist. And who does he attack last night, police? He has the nerve to say, if a police officer breaks the law, that officer must be held accountable, as if that's not a law right now. Wait, he goes further. I don't know if you could pick it up, Robert. Can you get it from where we stop? Because I could read it otherwise. <laughs> It, he then says we have to demilitarize our police departments so they don't look like occupying armies. We've got to move towards community policing. So you want the Black Panthers policing your neighborhood? Is that what you want? You want thugs walking around policing your neighborhood? I warned you that Obama wanted to create his own personal army. I warned you that. And we're moving rapidly in that direction. And you think it can't happen here. It's happening right in front of your eyes. And then 
when they were asked about ISIS, you cannot believe the answers from these two. I don't have words for them because I keep using the wrong words. I mean, the right words, you'll think I'm making the wrong statement. It was Mrs. Marx debating Mr. Lennon. So when they were asked about fighting ISIS, you cannot believe this. Does he want community soldiers as well? Who will Sanders send to fight ISIS? The college professors who put him in as mayor of Burlington, Vermont? The flower children who worship this man? And who will, who will Hillary Clinton use? She has no plan. She has no plan. So that's why I say I watched it for 15 minutes. I had to get out of the house. I was going to scream and yell, and the dog was getting scared. It's getting frightening to see how far down the uh, Democrat Party has fallen. Here is a lifetime socialist, communist, whatever you want to call him. You know the type, the union organizer from New York, the spritzer type who was jealous of everyone who did better than them, the ones who wished that they had invested in real estate in Manhattan and didn't, the anti-capitalists who are busy in the coffee houses planning the revolution while the city upgraded. The city moved up. People made fortunes in real estate where they bought a house and then flipped it and bought another house. Then they bought a better house. They bought better shoes. They got a nicer wife. Bernie Sanders is still wearing the same sandals that he wore when he was espousing anti-Americanism in the 70s. Bernie Wanders is, Wanders is still sandaling the same wife that he has marked, marched uh, arm in arm with to overthrow society with from the beginning. But never forget, he's a boogeyman for Hillary to make her look centrist in plain English. How could any cop vote for a Democrat after listening to them last night? And yet some will. Yes, some will. Yes, some will. I think it's time to take a call or two on the Savage Nation. The British Parliament is debating banning Donald Trump right now, incidentally. Did you know that? Can you imagine how far that nation has fallen and they're pandering to Muslim fanatics? that they would try to ban Donald Trump in Britain. I'm used to that, as you well know. I'm not going to say why. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about all the other topics I haven't gotten to. Got great sound from the guys today. It's a holiday. Most Americans are asleep still. I think they're still asleep, uh, not working. Another holiday. I want Washington back. I want Lincoln back. You want Martin Luther King Jr. Day? Make it, um, I would say, Ethnic Liberation Day so that it's not limited to one race. Or if you want, make a separate holiday for Martin Luther King Jr. He didn't found America, did he? So far as I know, it was George Washington who led the army against the British. So far as I know, it was Lincoln who was considered a great man. That's why we once had Washington's birthday as a national holiday. We had Lincoln's birthday as a holiday. And then the communists came along and they chiseled away the faces of Washington and Lincoln, and in their place they put in Martin, Martin Luther King Jr. Why did they do that? Why did they take away Washington and Lincoln? You think about what I'm saying to you, you'll, you'll realize I am so, so right. You'll realize that your society, your culture is being chiseled away from you right in front of your eyes, and you're sitting here cheering it because you consider yourself a liberal? What will replace the culture is the question, fools. What is the model that the communist professors are using to replace this culture with? What model are they using? Is it South Africa? You want to know a little bit more about South, South Africa? Would you like to know what a woman's life is like in South Africa? What model are these communist professors using who want to chisel away our culture, erase our borders, and decimate our language? Tell me what model they're using. What idealistic model do they have? What utopian vision do they have? Where has this utopian vision ever worked before? I saw a blog this morning. Oh, I wish I could put my hands on it. I asked the guys to fax it to me. And I, I may have it. I do so much in the morning, and I'm not complaining. I enjoy it. I get up, I get up with a, a love for the show. Here it is. Got it. It's on my Facebook page. Oh, it's perfect for right now. My favorite blog of the day, and it's about Sanders and Clinton, and it was written by an anonymous blogger named Charles Martel. I have to read it to you in a few minutes, but I want to take a caller first, a couple of callers. Nick on WFTL, welcome to the Savage Nation. 
Michael, I'm a retired police sergeant. Most, if not all, police unions are supporting Trump. As a matter of fact, Sheriff David Clark out of Milwaukee just did a piece. He defends Donald Trump on his immigration policy because... No, no, I, I know about him. He's a wonderful man, but I'm talking about the rank-and-file cops in America's, in America's precincts. Many of them are foolish Democrats. Yes, they are, but I, I got to tell you, it's a very, very small number. Every cop that I know, I live in Florida now, I was from New York, every cop that I've spoken to is voting for Trump. Not one. They were voting for Hillary. I understand, but how, what's the sample size? What, 100 people? Well, Mike, you gotta go, you gotta go nationally because it, in, in terms of politics, most cops, even the younger cops today, are still coming from conservative families. They still hold conservative values and they don't want to see their country destroyed. And that's the, the motive. Yeah, but here's the problem with cops and, 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 and the Democrat Party. Most cops also work for their pension. Let's be clear. You have a nice pension and you worked hard for it. But most cops take the job. And I don't know what the, the proportion of what drives them. Some is to serve, some is for the pension. And they want that big fat pension. They don't want anyone cutting into that pension. And their, their, their guess is that a Democrat socialist will not cut their pensions while Trump will. I mean, I'm laying it on the line. See, I read, I read this bit very well, Nick, and I don't think you see it the way they do. I understand, but you know what? They're more afraid of a, of a Bernie Sanders or a Hillary Clinton cutting into their pension. Trump is pro-union. He's not going to cut into their pension at all. He's not. I can tell you, I, I was the retiree delegate to the New York City. Well, let's talk about You want to talk about cutting pensions? Uh, you think all police pensions are, are valid? Have you seen the numbers that some people are getting? 400000 a year? 500000 a year? Have you seen San Francisco's firemen and police, what they retire on? The, these piggish unions, what they've done to the city and state here? Have you seen it? The women who can't lift the ladder and don't get their uniforms dirty? 500000 a year for a police chief? I couldn't agree with you more, Michael. I couldn't agree with you more. But in the main, across the country... The cops who retire on disability and seen golfing the next day in Florida? I'm sorry, we need reform all around. Thanks for the call. See, you didn't think I'd go there, but I will. We need we need pension reform. That's a whole separate topic. The public employees are living fat. They're making more money than, the, than people in the private sector. How about the tenured professors and their uh, retirement funds? The college teachers who do nothing, who support socialism, living on $100,000 a year pensions. How about them? I'd like to see those pensions reined in, wouldn't you? I mean, there are plenty of jobs in Walmart somewhere for them. What did I want to read to you? It's a quarter to one. Do I have time at this shot here? I could save it. Uh, the attack on whites is what I'm talking about today. The attack on the white race has become a sick, sick story that is being promulgated by the radical left, but it's now become mainstreamed because Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders called for a war on white police last night in case you didn't listen carefully. They were asked about white privilege. Did you hear that? That's an inven invention. The whole concept of white privilege is a construct of the Alinsky radical left. They've gone after skin color, and they've turned that into a theme. And because they can brainwash the poor children in school, they figure they can now brainwash the adults in the media, which they've done, like Lester Holt, who was always adult. And now they want to go after everyone and say... Oh, you, you've benefited from from white privilege, have you? I could tell you my story. I don't think so. I really don't know. I I suppose it was white privilege that got me where I am. Let's see. Uh, my grandfather died at 47 from a heart attack after emigrating here. Brought his children over. Worked his behind off and died of a heart attack as a little immigrant tailor in New York. My father died at 57 from a heart attack after killing himself working seven days a week so that his son could have a better life. Let's see, I was rejected from every job I applied for for 30 years because of my white race. Let's see, every step of the way in my radio career, I've had to navigate the rapids. I've had to swim upstream every day of my life. I work 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm, I suppose it's white privilege that got me where I am. How come I didn't think of that? How come I didn't think of that, that they were all helping me along the way because I was one of them? 
And let's see, white privilege gave us 